Hey guys, my name is Shai and I'm recording this weekly reading on January 30th. Just my bare naked table here today because I keep hearing unadorned, unadorned, unadorned. So I was like, okay, fine. The table will be unadorned. And the other word is unresisting, unresisting. Massive theme right now about being like removing adornments, right? Taking off all of the trappings of anything that's not yourself, right? Taking off all of those external trappings and exposing you for who you really are. And that's all that's happening like on every level. So things around you are also being exposed for who they really are. This is <sighs> going to be so different depending on how much resistance you have to this, right? The more you are, the more you are in resistance to dropping your adornments, right? The, and the more you are afraid of being seen, the more difficult th this kind of week is going to be for you. I mean, this energy, this this fears of being seen. This has already been going on for a few days because of the Mercury and Pluto conjunction that happened, you know, like last Friday or whatever. <laughs> it's basically our Aquarian fears are being triggered because of the Aquarian new Moon that is coming up. So essentially, it all boils down to fears of being seen, fears of unity. So because we're stepping into deeper levels of unity and unity consciousness, but with that comes the fear of unity, right? The fear of unity um, and fears of unity uh, for some people, especially with Aquarius energy, are coming through in terms of like fears of advanced technology, uh, specifically like fears of AI, fears of Big Brother spying on you and all those kinds of things um, that it's being like massively triggered. So... The only thing that's going to help us here is remembering that your inner light is the only thing that you need to keep yourself safe from all of this, right? And it's not even that you need to be kept safe. It's that you are safe. You're always safe. It doesn't matter. It doesn't even matter the truth or reality or what. It doesn't even matter if any of these fears that you might have are true. It, like the fears themselves and the, the, the facts of the fears are irrelevant because you are always safe and your light always protects you. So just gather your inner light all around you. Gather your right, get, get, pull it out from inside of you, gather it all around you and just let it shine, right? And that's going to be that can be difficult because you might be having fears of being seen, right? And of course, the shiter, the, sh the, the shiter, <laughs> the brighter, the brighter you shine, the more visible you will be, but the also, the more visible you are because of your bright light, that is the thing that makes it so that nothing can touch you, right? So in terms of the astrology for the week, uh, today it's a sun square Uranus and that's just kind of a stressful, anxious energy, right? Kind of allowing these fears to be triggered. Um, but it, it really passes, guys. It's really passing. So I'm not going to really talk too much about that just to let you know that it's there and um, any like sudden, sharp, stressful or anxious energies are coming par partially from that. And the Aquarius new moon... dropping out of your fears of unity, right? Dropping out of your fears of unity because, um, and since, uh, and since this is actually like squaring with Uranus and Taurus, uh, I feel like there's this thing of, you know, you guys are all spiritual beings, you know, into your spirituality and everything. And you might be comfortable with like spiritual unity, with like unity of souls, right? With, um, aligning with source and understanding that source is, is the source of all unity and the law of one and, we're all one and all of that, but um, the shadow side of that, right? The other side, the, the, the opposite pole of that is fearing unity on earth, right? You might um, have these deep, dark fears about expressions of unity on earth, feeling like different things happening on earth are trying to make you conform or they are trying to get you into some kind of like hive mind, right? It's like different fears of earth-based unity, right? Um, so that, something to be aware of, something to just know that that's what you're navigating, right? How are you afraid of unity on earth? That, that That's like a whole kettle of fish that I think I could talk about for like hours and hours and hours. But so I think just for now, I just want to like raise that as something to be aware of, right? Your fears of earth-based unity are being triggered um, but just remember that fall back into spiritual unity if if that helps um, helps you navigate that. And 
So of course, with the Aquarius new moon means that this is the lunar new year and it's the year of the black water tiger. I might make a separate video about that. So again, just touching on that and I think moving on. And you know what? This energy of like touching on something and moving past it, knowing that everything is 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 a passing vibe, that leads me to my next point on February 3rd, Mercury turns direct and that is super cool because we already had Venus turn direct a couple days ago. And once Mercury turns direct on February 3rd, um, or fourth for people on the like the other side of the time zones, um, all the planets are going to be direct, all of them. All of the planets are going to be direct, which means this massive slowdown, this massive slog that has been January is starting to clear out. I think some people are still going to be kind of stuck in the mud a little bit until the equinox, but um, just depending on, you know, your own personal vibe, what's happening with you, big opportunity for things to start moving. And the last time that I remember all of the planets being direct with like no retrogrades at all was, I think it was Aries season of 2021. So almost a whole year ago, right? Like 11 months ago. And that energy with all of the planets moving direct was so fucking fast. It was like, bam, 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 bam. Um, it was almost a little bit much, but of course it's happening this time in Aquarius season, not Aries season. So I'm interested to see how that's going to play out. We'll talk more about that probably next week, but just be aware that things are massively rapidly shifting and towards the end of the week, you might start having feelings of like, it could be, it could, it could be a little bit of like mental overwhelm, overstimulation, mental overwhelm, too much happening, too many things coming at you at once. Quick, quick, quick. Um, <laughs> I think the the antidote to that is to just know that everything is rapidly passing. I'm actually seeing like arrows just flying past you. Everything's just flying past you and just let it fly. Let it fly. And then on the fourth, sun conjunct Saturn in Aquarius. Um, let's actually just get some cards on that. The sun conjunct Saturn in Aquarius. That's going to be for people who still have these re residual fears about unity on earth or um, that it could trigger that like Saturn's going to be cracking the whip and I think he's going to be f making you face your fears of all things Aquarian so for some people that's going to be dropping out of your adornments right dropping out of your false um, like false egoic structures right shining your light on a deeper level and other people it's going to be facing fears of advanced technology facing fears of the collective trying to control you or tell you what to do right let's get some cards specifically for the sun conjunct Saturn okay <laughs> What's the first fucking card out <laughs> is the seven of swords. So <laughs> yeah, exactly what I just said. <laughs> um, for some people, this could be really sharp. Okay. This could feel really sharp. Um, some people you could be finding ways that other people have deceived you. You could also find yourself in a kind of web of confusion, but just know that any web of confusion, like these cards, this is cracking me up. You see this, the seven of cups, right? I, I just said web of confusion. Yeah, exactly, this web of confusion because there are so many things available to you because by that ha time happens, all of the planets are gonna be direct. So everything is gonna be available to you and you might find yourself in this web of confusion and uncertainty and I think what helps with this is to remember that you're actually none of the things that you sense or perceive or think or feel. Even your feelings and even your thoughts, they're not really you. Not, not, there's, you are, it's like tune into emptiness, right? Tune into the importance of emptiness. Know that you are simply a window of the universe looking out on the universe. You are just an awareness. That is all that anybody is. That is all that anything is, right? You are a window of awareness and then all these different frequencies fly around through your window of awareness. So, it doesn't matter what you sense or perceive this week. Remember that you are nothing but an awareness and any of the things that you sense or perceive, any of the things you see, any of the things you hear, any of the things you think, any of the things you feel, any weird vibes you catch, anything. It doesn't matter all of it. None, none of it is, none of it is you. And, and there is this thing where you could go, okay, so it's not me. Therefore, it's this other person. This energy is them and I'm picking it up on them. And that, that is true. That is relatively true. But what is also true is that where, where did those energies come from them, right? They're also, they're also just kind of holding these energies that are flying around. Everyone is just like an awareness, a vessel for energy. So 
a first step, a very good first step is to know that if you're picking up on an energy from someone, yeah, it's it's their energy, it's not your energy, but then re also remember, this will help with you practicing and holding non-judgment, right? If you remember that their, the energy that you're picking up from them, and you might be even internalizing it, right? If, you, if somebody walks into the room and suddenly you feel angry or sad or anxious, go, oh wait, I just picked up on their energy. And then it's like, okay, well, they're angry and, and bitter and whatever, right? But then just remember that they're also just carrying that energy around. We're all just carrying around these energies that aren't ours. So dropping into emptiness, right? Dropping into emptiness and remembering that you're just an awareness floating around in space. <laughs> I think that's gonna be my personal strategy for this next week. <laughs> anyway, um, remembering that you're just an awareness, nothing more, and none of these energies can damage your awareness right? Nothing can damage your awareness. Nothing. So, wow, 7-7. Seven, seven. Let's get one more card on this. 7-7 seven, seven judgment. <laughs> so, this was specifically for the Saturn-Sun conjunction. <laughs> Somebody's getting beamed up to the spaceship, okay? This feels like With Saturn, there's always an element of accountability. But with Saturn and Aquarius, it's... I'm just hearing like accountability and oneness. Accountability and oneness. And the type of oneness. You are accountable for the type of oneness that you choose to experience. <laughs> just like everything else, there are layers and levels and zones and types of oneness, right? There is the ultimate oneness of the ultimate source, the original one, right? But <laughs> in our human bodies, in our human lives, we experience different degrees of oneness, right? Oneness within yourself, oneness with you and your partner, oneness in a, in a family group, oneness in a soul group, oneness in a community group, um... And then there's all the, the types of oneness that you might fear, right? The types of earth-based oneness that you might fear. The, because there's, there's going to take an, an, an acknowledgement of everything that you can imagine or conceive of or perceive in the light also exists in, in a shadow form, right? Light and shadow, but neither can exist without the other. And the shadow is also nothing to be feared. The shadow is nothing to be feared. If you, if you feel fears of the shadow arising within you, drop into that empty, empty state. Drop into that empty state. This is going to be like a fantastic week to be practicing mindfulness meditation because it's going to help you tune into that empty state and just allow those fears to drop, like to float, to float away, to float away. Know what not to pay attention to, okay? Because Saturn comes through and is like, teaches you to let go of something. Saturn, Saturn forces you to let go of something that is has been dragging you down. It's like Saturn looks at you and goes like, why are you holding that cinder block? Drop the cinder block. And he will basically put pressure on you until the cinder block becomes so heavy that you are forced to drop it. <laughs> um, like there's different, lots of different planets and lots of different energies in the universe walk you through letting go, right? That's like, like a, a massive common lesson that all different types of experience are teaching us. But Saturn is like, it's like he puts all of his gravity onto something and is like this is going to become so heavy that you are forced to let it go and if you don't let it go you're going to drown with it right so you don't want to let your fears become so heavy that you drown with them right if you feel that your fears are intensifying this week <laughs> that's saturn putting pressure on your fears he's like actually magnifying your fears so that you become so that you realize you have to take your attention off of them. And how do, you, how do you let go of a fear, right? I mean, sometimes your life will have to walk you through a process where you have to confront and face your fear. Um, but that is honestly more of like a Scorpio, Pluto type of facing the fear, right? Um, with this Aquarius energy, I feel like it's more... You're going to be able to intellectualize your fear. You're going to be able to run your mind around this. And your mind is freshly cleared of fears because of the Pluto... Um, uh, Pluto Mercury conjunction that happened last week. So you're actually being, you've actually been set up for this, right? So really allow the fears to just arise in your mind and let them go, let them go, let them go. Because 
Um, well, this card apparently wants to come out. Page of Pentacles. Um, but while that card was jumping around, I was just thinking about how, you know, it's the going to be the Lunar New Year and this kind of New Year's vibe is finally going to be picking up um, in February, you know. Yeah, the Page of Pentacles walks out into your new year, right? Walking out into your new life. Walking out into your new life. So allow yourself to take your attention off the fears. That's what I was trying to say. Take your attention off the fears. It is so important to know when to not pay attention to something. You have to know what not to pay attention to, right? You have, like, you have to be able to look at something and go, I don't wanna pay attention to that. I don't wanna put my energy on that. I don't wanna focus on that. I wanna look somewhere else. I wanna look at something else, right? Your attention, your awareness, it, it's like take accountability for your awareness, right? You are the one in charge of your awareness. You are your awareness. That is all that you are is an awareness. So take accountability. And I, I, I'm using this kind of like, forceful language because of the the Saturn influence it right this is that's where that's coming from this is the the Saturnian influence of take accountability for um for where your awareness is going right don't give your power away to other people don't you give your power away to other energies other frequencies other beings um anything don't let anything distract you because anything that's distracting you anything especially anything that distracts you in a negative way if anything that lowers your frequency literally anything anything that lowers your frequency it's like take your attention off of that Take accountability for where you're allowing your attention to go. Your attention to go. Put on, put your awareness only on the things that you want to experience more of. And this is going to trigger feelings of, but I have to stay informed, <laughs> right? Um, oh, but I have to, um, I have to, I have to fight a battle, right? You could be like, oh, but I have to save this person. I want to help this person feel better. I have to fight the battle against darkness, or you know, it's going to be different for everybody. Um, maybe you just. Maybe it's just this feeling of I have to be aware of what's going on around me, right? Um, but it's like all of that, really? Is that really true? <laughs> Something for you to feel into, right? That's what this the theme of this week is going to be. Is it really necessary? Is it really required of you to um, be aware of all of these things that you don't want to be aware of, right? Um, and as I feel about it, that was the old paradigm, right? That was the old paradigm. You had to become aware of all the negative things around you when you were in the dissension cycle, because that is how you stayed alive in a dark time, right? But now <laughs> we're, that's that's done, right? Now we're on our way up and up and up, and you want to be focusing on upwards. You want to be pointing your attention upwards. You want to be placing your attention on things that you want more of in your life. You want to be placing your attention on things that raise your frequency and feel good. And if you feel guilty for not thinking about something, if you feel guilty for not helping in a more obvious way, just remember that this is all about curating your vibration, right? Curating your vibration. You, If you feel like you need to pay attention to negative things because you want to fight the battle or because you want to help, um, understand that letting like putting your attention on the negativity and then letting the negativity flow into you that doesn't actually help that doesn't actually help <laughs> um what does help what actually like the thing that so you what you actually want to do is increase the light on the planet right what you actually want to do is help other people feel get better you want to help other people improve their lives you want to raise your own frequency you want to choose higher vibrations right you want all of that that's what you want so this week you're going to be learning lessons about how to do that more effectively how to do that as a vibrational being and what you're going to find <laughs> is that the first most important thing is to be curating your vibration like moment to moment, right? You, you don't wait until something um, triggers you. You don't wait until you see something you don't like. You just constantly, you're constantly focusing on your own vibration, on gathering your light within you and increasing your vibration, which means for most, most of the time, like 90% of the time, you're going to be wanting to... Um, be focusing on things that make you feel better, right? Focusing on things that raise your frequency um, and that expand you and allow you to grow and thrive. You want to be focusing on the light, right? You need to choose the light, <laughs> choose the light all, all of the time in every moment of your existence, right? Constant awareness on light if that's what you want to choose. And, and that is how you actually invite others into the light that is how you actually help them improve their lives because then you have more light to share with them then you have more light to show them then you are a beacon of light for them to follow so <laughs> literally you help others 
and you increase the light on the planet literally by being the light, just by being the light and by cho by choosing positivity and joy and peace and hopefulness and good feelings for yourself. That that is how you do what you want to do. And and your human conditioning is going to tell you that you need to feel that like, is you know it's going to have that old old way. It's going to have a different way of thinking. I actually feel like I don't even want to describe it because that would be inviting it into the field, right? But you know how you know how it is, right? You know how it was. You know how it used to be. <laughs> you know how you used to operate. But that doesn't need it doesn't need to be like that anymore. Now it is. You literally find success. You find love. You find enjoyment. You find wealth. You find abundance. You find community. You you find the ascension vortex. You find a higher frequency planet. Um, you, you find that all literally just by choosing it and surrounding yourself with it all the time, all the time. Take accountability for what you put your awareness on. And, you know, I, I don't often like to say like, take accountability uh, because that feels like, eh, you know, um, but that's so much the, the Saturn influence. It's like not even funny. <laughs> um, swan beauty, right? beauty <laughs> focus on the beauty and look at this card she's this beautiful woman in this beautiful pond with this beautiful swan <laughs> right but she has a blindfold on she can't see it so maybe some of you feel like you can't see the beauty right? you, you can't see the light you can't feel the peace all around you but it, then it's like find find it <laughs> find it take accountability for finding the beauty for finding the light in your life and i know that depending on where you're at you might have to look pretty hard <laughs> all right but then it's like start small start with the smallest most beautiful thing you can find um you know what what did what beauty did you find today can you find a flower can you find a beautiful leaf can you find a beautiful tree with all its leaves have fallen because it's the middle of winter and but the tree is still there and you can feel the life pul pulsing within it right could you have a hot cup of tea could you have a hot shower what, like, do you have a dry place to sleep, right? Find something beautiful. Find, find, find the beauty within you. Find the light that you carry with, inside of you. Even, even if you're in like literally in a black hole, like literally down the bottom of a well, <laughs> there's the light within you, right? There is always that beauty within you. Peacock, prosperity. <laughs> And this is, this card is about knowing your value, knowing your own beauty, right? Man, birds, birds. Wow. Um, yesterday I was driving, my husband was driving down by the river. <laughs> um, and uh, down, down by the river, it's like there was these um, big, huge fields of grass on either side. And <laughs> all over this one little pocket of these fields was birds. There was uh, Canada geese and these big white geese. I don't know what they're called. Um, and pigeons and what was the, f there was a fourth bird. Seagulls, of course. How could I forget the seagulls, right? <laughs> All of these four species of, of like, you know, waterfowl or well, I guess pigeons aren't waterfowl, but you know what I mean, right? Of these four species of fowl were all hanging out all in this mixed group. I thought it was really interesting because I've been down to that river like all the time and I don't often see them all mixing like that, but they were all mixed together. And now that I think about it, those birds were, <laughs> they were feeling the energy of Aquarius season, right? They were all mixed together in their variety and they were all like just hanging out. They were chilling. They weren't fighting. They weren't squabbling. And some of them were all over the road and we, we had to drive up and park on the road and the other people come the other way. They had to park on the road because there was some, uh, I think it was a pigeon and some, some of the geese were standing in the road and they wouldn't move. We were like, drove right up to them, right? And they still wouldn't move. We had to honk and eventually like finally this bird like scooted out of the way. And I was like, that pigeon knows his value, right? He knows what's up. He's like, screw these humans. I don't give a shit about that. I was sitting in the road like, you know, preening my feathers and that's what I was doing and I don't need to get up for anybody. Right? <laughs> I really kind of respected that pigeon. It was like, he was like, yep, that's where, that's where I am. That's what I'm doing. And I don't, I don't give a shit about this car coming up to me because I know the cars are going to stop. Okay. That, that pigeon, <laughs> that pigeon had his inner light gathered around him and he knew that he could just stand in the middle of the road. And even though these big, powerful humans with their big, powerful machines were going to come driving, he knew that we would see them and he knew that we would stop and that he would be fine. That's, you want to embody the energy of that pigeon this week, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> absolutely. And one more card, I think. Uh, that's the one. Contribution. Awareness of linked contribution. Just like all of those birds, all hanging out together, all sharing their energy. Absolutely. Linked contribution, okay? That comes back to what I was saying of 
you all, I know, I know, well, <laughs> I go, every time I say all about my viewers of a video, um, I always get this feeling like, don't say all, don't say all, because maybe it's only 99% of you, right? <laughs> so the vast majority of you, I know you want to be of service to the light and you want to increase the amount of light on the planet. And just like I was saying earlier about how you don't actually do that by by being aware of the negative or focusing on the negative or fighting the negative or any of that, you just do that by increasing your own frequency and then being a greater source of light on the planet. Be This week, really, really, really pay attention to how much you serve the collective, literally just by sitting in your living room, on your couch, vibrating with the light, right? Being of high frequency, literally just sitting there doing nothing, not leaving your house, doing nothing. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. This is the week to really, really clue in that it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what you do at all, okay? It, it's, it's just, is it going to be time maybe later this month, you know, for putting in the grounded action for your manifestations, right? That's That energy is going to pick up. For this week, there's going to be this big lesson is it doesn't matter what you do because you're doing so much energetically, right? So, so, so much energetically. So the single most important thing you can do for the entire universe is to just sit there and raise your frequency. That's it. That is the single most important thing you can do. And sorry, I just whacked the camera because I was scratching my nose. <laughs> um, and 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 that that's all you need to do. And that is so much. That is so much. What you do is so much because we're all vibrationally linked Right? We are all vibrationally linked. So pay attention to your vibration. Curate your awareness. Vibrate as high as you can. Right, Vibrate as high as you can, no matter what you see in your awareness. Right, Even if you, something lower frequency than you shows up in your awareness, then you just shine even brighter right don't shrink back from it don't resist it right you don't need to be in resistance to it um don't shrink back from it just let it be don't pay any like you can just be aware of it right you can just look at it you can just see it feel it whatever just let it be there don't resist it don't fight it and then just place your awareness back on your on the light within just place your awareness back on the light and then just let your light grow and you can let it override any of the things outside of you that you don't like any of those frequencies that you know, that you don't want to resonate with, just let your light override them, overwhelm them, overflow them like, like, like a geyser of water, right? Like a geyser of liquid light just flowing over everything. Just let it override, right? And if that energy doesn't want to be overwhelmed or overridden by the light, it will either feel your light and then come to the light for healing, right? Or, and to raise its own frequency, or if that energy, because it has free will too, if it doesn't want your light, then it will just go away, <laughs> it'll just leave so you will either just by offering your light and letting your light spill out you will either allow another energy to choose healing and higher frequencies or you will it will just leave and it will go somewhere else that's more comfortable for it and that's perfect that's its choice so yeah everything you do <laughs> everything you do con contributes to the collective because we are all linked vibrationally so just let your light shine, guys. Let your light shine. I love you. Sending you so much love and light. Bye.